Let's all stand together. You help us sing. receive this evening's offering. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. God, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for allowing us to come back to your house tonight. Lord, I pray for Brother Florentine as he comes. Lord, I pray that you'll just use him. Lord, take this offer and use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'm going to ask Sister Gayla to come and sing. You give her a hand as she comes.
David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost, save no in Christ. Little John said he. church uh, this morning uh, me and Callan and we was talking in the uh, I said Callan I said I sure do love you big and that's just how we talk and I said I sure do love you big and his response was thank you daddy and it didn't really strike me till right now how much um our Heavenly Father wants us to tell Him how much we love Him. And we ought to say it in a way and mean it in a way that we are the only person on earth that tells our Heavenly Father that we love Him. We ought to mean it that much. And uh, He's sure been good to us, church. And I believe that when we do that, he would, he would probably speak back to us and say, Thank you. I love you too. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy.
and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy. you're standing tonight and I'll I'll be honest with you Some, yeah brother Philip brother Philip Hodge oh, just sir let's pray for him I'll be honest with you sometimes one of the most difficult things is to have discretion and discernment and know what to do in a service like this and There's, <clears throat> Brother Florentine's going to come in just a minute and speak, and we're grateful to have him tonight. But, but right now, sometimes I believe God's moving, and sometimes, <clears throat> I know it's Sunday night. I know <clears throat> people are tired, and, but I also know people are burdened, and people have troubles, and people have problems. And for some reason in my spirit right now, I can't get off my heart that there's somebody and you're dealing and you're struggling with some things in your life. And people have talked to you. People have tried to help you. But <clears throat> you know down deep in your heart that you need Jesus. And you need the Lord. And See, sometimes people are just wondering within themselves, what if there really is something about all this Jesus stuff? <laughs> you ever known anybody like that? <clears throat> they're afraid to give in and they're afraid to to give over and they're afraid to but deep down inside you really want to know what if there really is something see you've tried everything else <clears throat> you've been in every other avenue and every other every other path that you can go but deep down you want to know what if there really is something to this Jesus <clears throat> I want you to know he's everything <laughs> amen he's more than enough he is enough he's everything I believe the Bible described it and said, He is my all and all. <laughs> How many of you can just say that tonight? And I know other people sing this song. I know others have sung it, but I, I just, <clears throat> I can't get it off my heart tonight. And <clears throat> How many of you could say, really, if you ask the question, what would I do without Jesus? <laughs> How many of you could say, there's absolute, listen, I'd be a mess if it wasn't for Jesus in my life. Doesn't mean you hadn't been through troubles. Doesn't mean you haven't been through storms. Doesn't mean you hadn't been through trials and temptations. <clears throat> but if I were going to preach tonight, I'd preach on what it means to turn your trial into triumph. Because Paul said, I counted all joy. 
Why can you count it all joy when you're going through a burden and when you're going through a trial? Because when you know who Jesus is, you don't value things here like you value things there. <laughs> when you know who Jesus is, you understand there's a greater place than this place that we're living in. And when you understand how much Jesus loves you, you know that no matter what you're going through and no matter what you're dealing with, that He'll never leave you and He'll never forsake you. And listen, I, I don't know why, but I'm going to sing this song. I'll probably mess it up. I hadn't sung this song in a long time. But while we sing, I promise I won't keep you standing any longer after this. I know this is out of order. This is not the normal way we do service. But listen, if you've got a burden and you've got a trouble, you've got a trial right now, something you need to pray about, don't you wait any longer. What would I do without you? Lord, I just couldn't walk this road alone. When I'm hungry, He feeds me. And when I'm thirsty, He's my water. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? When I need someone. Rocks me in his bosom. What would I do without Jesus, the shepherd of my valley? I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? I like this verse. When my tears flow like a river. And burdens are high as mountains. You've been there, and the ones I've counted on have let me down. Oh, that's when I go to Jesus. He's the one that I depend on. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do when I need someone? My tears flow like a river, and my burdens are high as mountains, and the ones I've counted on have let me down. I'm glad that's when Jesus is there. That's when I go to Jesus. He's the one that I can count on. I couldn't make it without Jesus. Sing it with me. When I need someone to talk to, he's always there to listen. When arms fold without me, he rocks me in his bosom. What would I do without Jesus? The shepherd of my valley, I could make him. you grateful for the love of God. <clears throat> Amen. Here's what I want us to do right now before Brother Florentine comes. We're grateful to have him all the way from Romania to be here with us tonight. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for missionaries and grateful for people that can be. See, we can be the hands and feet of Jesus here, but I'm grateful for others that God have called to be able to go into other places and to the utmost parts of the earth in the utmost part of the world and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a lot of people outside of our little communities that need to know about Jesus. And I'm grateful for that. Before he comes, <clears throat> I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. No doubt 
Many people have got prayer requests. If you've got something on your heart, would you just raise your hand, unspoken or not? If you've got something that we need to pray about, just raise your hand. Now hold them up one more time just for a minute. I want you to listen. If you're over here, I want you to look across this way. And if you're over here, I want you to look across that way. And I like to do this because you know what, Brother Jeff? It reminds me that every single one of us are going through something. And sometimes the devil will convince you in the middle of the week, the devil will convince you you're the only one going through anything. And he'll be, anybody know what I'm talking about? He'll beat you up. He'll beat you down. You feel like you're the only one with a burden. But listen, every single hand in this place tonight, and if there were many others here, there would be people, not a hand would not be able to go up saying, I'm going through something. And so I want us to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, we're so grateful for your mercy and your grace. God, we can't do without you. Lord, I'm glad that somebody told us about Jesus one day. God, because of that, we were able to be saved. Lord, for there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we can be saved. Lord, I know that your word said that every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And God, I'm grateful. God, because of your mercy and your grace and your love and your forgiveness. God, I'm grateful that I was able to bow on this side of eternity and claim you and profess you as Lord. God, I'm glad to be saved, but Lord, if there's one here tonight that's never accepted you as Christ, Lord, if there's one here tonight that doesn't have that personal relationship with you, oh God, I pray before the end of this service, God, that they would come. Lord, they would bow on this side of eternity and profess you and claim you as Lord. For God, there'll come a day one day when every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess. Lord, I pray for the broken, the weary, every hand that went up. God, you know every need. You're nigh of them that are of a broken heart. God, you're acquainted with all of our ways. God, I pray for every burden and every struggle. God, would you be real to them tonight? God, bless your missionary. God, bless Brother Florentine. Lord, I pray, God, that you would uh, touch his ministry, touch his uh, family. God, I pray for your hedge of protection and safety around him. God, as he travels all across this country, And to Romania, Lord, would you help him to be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God will give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people said, give Brother Florentine a clap offer and make him feel welcome tonight as he comes on right now. They're going to start a slideshow for him first and then he'll be on. Amen. You watch as they show this tonight. Situated in Eastern Europe, Romania is blessed by God with nice landscapes and natural resources, having a population of about 20 million people. The Romanian people had to endure some hardships in their recent history because of the communist regime installed in 1945 and which prevailed until December 1989. It was a regime based on atheism, with a strong propaganda for all the society, taking many Christians to prisons, demolishing church buildings, uninterested about the condition of its people, where hunger was experienced every day. All these problems led to the revolution from December 1989 when communism was overthrown and the Romanian people got back their freedom. The religion of the Romanians is Eastern Orthodoxy, which is based on rituals and traditions, worshipping icons, and salvation, the way in which man can get eternal life is through works. Therefore, one who has more good deeds goes into heaven, and one who has more bad deeds goes to hell. In this way, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ remains insignificant. It is also promoted the cult of the relics. The people are encouraged to worship relics. In this way, one can have a good life, good family, and a good job. God had a plan, 
and showed his mercy to the Romanian people when in the beginning of the 1900s there was a spiritual awakening that started through the translation of the Bible into the Romanian modern language. It was done by an Orthodox priest named Dumitru Cornelescu and who was supported by a Romanian princess, Ranuca Kalimachi. Cornelescu experienced a personal encounter with Jesus Christ while translating the Bible, being known as the Luther of Romania. Today, the need of the people to know God is the same. And there are many mission opportunities in Moldova Republic, a former Romanian territory neighboring Romania on the east, and the Ukraine as well. Since 2007, when I started working with Vision Outreach Romania, God helped me to take the Gospel through various missionary projects throughout Eastern Europe. There are a few things that are staying at the core of my mission work at this time. The first one, the Ministry of Evangelism. I do it through preaching or by giving literature on the street, speaking with people, and I thank him for the opportunities I have to lead people to Christ. I'm involved in church planting in a village without any evangelical church. I'm also running social projects as Christian witness to the communities. A number of times portraits are given to the poor, some of them starting to attend a Baptist church. Equipping is another way to serve the Church of Jesus Christ. Christian events are organized in public places using any opportunity to give out the Gospel. Since 2015, I'm using Biblical Apologetics from Answers in Genesis. In a former communist country, the conferences, courses and the creationist literature are of great need and importance. Certainly, Christian resources are important in mission work, and through books publishing this need is met. Several titles were printed and they are a blessing, especially in Moldova Republic, where donations were given to pastors, church leaders, youth leaders, churches, or Christian schools. Evoking is another part of my ministry. Having so many years of communism with restrictions and persecutions, God raised men and women who smuggled Bibles and were willing to pay the price in those times. Interviews are taken today with those involved and research activity is done at the National Archives in order to produce a history about Christian working underground. These places remain a challenge for ministry. And in this way, if you would like to be part of this ministry, it will be my privilege to have your support in prayer or in any way you feel led by God. May God bless you and please contact us at the following address. So good to be tonight uh, again uh, here at the First Field Baptist Church in Hayesville. Uh, I bring greetings from my uh, home country, Romania, from my home church and many other churches I serve in the mission field in Eastern Europe. Um, I want to thank the Lord for uh, how the Lord has been using me uh, um, in the, through the years and uh, I want to thank God for uh, the opportunities He brought in my way. Uh, to take the gospel to the people uh, there in Romania, in Moldova Republic, and the Ukraine. Um, 
since I haven't been here, uh, the Lord um, has done some uh, slight changes uh, into uh, my uh, mission work, actually brought a new project uh, into my mission work and uh, did some uh, uh, changes into the work uh, I'm doing. As you know, uh, certainly, um, I was very much involved uh, in summer camp ministry uh, for over 10 years uh, since uh, I started uh, mission work as I returned back home uh, from my studies in Northern Ireland in 2006. And um, uh, I thank the Lord for up to 3,000 uh, kids and young people that were evangelized in summer camps uh, in, uh, in the countries of the Eastern Europe. And I want to thank the Lord, the Lord for over 400 kids that uh, were uh, brought to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, through, this, through these years. Um, it is uh, God's grace, and I want to thank the Lord for His faithfulness. Uh, and also, um, it's your contribution as well in the work that has been done uh, in the summer camp ministries uh, there uh, in Eastern Europe. Well, in 2015, um, I was in the United States, and um, I was in Pennsylvania and, uh, with a Romanian family, and they said, Florentine, how about going to Portland, Oregon? And, uh, well, I said, uh, I don't know anybody there specifically as a pastor to know, but I, contact, I can contact uh, a, a family that I know, and uh, when I call that family, um, I was introduced to his uh, brother-in-law, and when I spoke to him, uh, I uh, said my name, and uh, he said, are you related to John Klippa? Uh, he said, yes, I'm his son. And he said, well, I worked with your father 40 years ago in your in, in home city. Uh, and um, after uh, two weeks, I was at his house. And he, tell, he told me about how he uh, invited my dad uh, to start doing Bible smuggling operations in Eastern Europe. Um, and, uh, well, you know uh, the story of my dad um, as he... Uh, was uh, taking Bibles to the countries of the former Soviet Union, uh, and um, suddenly, in a, in a specific time, he was put on the blacklist of the secret police, and uh, when uh, um, a couple were found with Bibles uh, at the border of the Soviet Union, and uh, they were questioned how they got the Bible, they say from John Klippa, he was under arrest, and a tough time, tough time started for him, and after a lot of um, interrogations, persecutions, uh, he lost his life and went to be with the Lord. And um, we uh, uh, been uh, supported by Pastor Richard Wormbrandt from the organization Voice of the Martyrs, who was the voice of the persecuted church and who found about my dad. And uh, he published this case in his magazine, Voice of the Martyrs from Germany. Um, I decided uh, when I went to, his, uh, to this uh, guy at his house uh, to start uh, doing uh, uh, some documentaries about those people uh, involved uh, in uh, uh, Bible smuggling operations in communist time. I had uh, actually an invitation, uh, a request uh, in, this, uh, in this case from a very close friend who was a Christian journalist at the Romanian television in Bucharest, a very influential uh, Baptist leader in Romania, and he wanted uh, to uh, show about those who sacrificed their lives uh, in the communist time. So uh, in 2015, uh, I uh, um, started with him doing recordings. You observe him uh, there uh, with his camera interviewing a mechanic uh, in, my, uh, in the railway station of my city. Um, and, uh, you know, there are so many stories. Uh, that mechanic would tell you how he was putting uh, uh, Bible packages in a secret place in, the, in his locomotive where not even the secret police was allowed to, get, to, to open that place. Um, and uh, other story would be about that uh, man uh, dressed in a white T-shirt who for all his life was in a wheelchair, he was a handicapped man. And uh, guess what? He was a Bible smuggler. 
and uh, he was asking uh, people to carry his bag when he was leaving a house of a Christian that was giving him, providing him Bibles. And people looking on the street at him, they were saying, I will, find, I will help this guy to take him to the train station because he is a handicapped. And they didn't know that in that bag there were Bibles. So many uh, stories like that. And uh, last year, um, the Lord opened another door for me uh, to uh, do research in the uh, archives of the former secret police in Bucharest. Uh, and um, I'm able now to see uh, the files that the officers from the secret police done to so many uh, people involved uh, in those times in Christian service. Well, the purpose of this uh, work uh, would be to um, strengthen the church and to inform about how uh, people uh, serve the gospel, the, serve with the gospel, serve the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in uh, com under, uh, under communism and be a blessing uh, to the Christian church. Um, and um, I also prepared uh, a number of slides that uh, I would uh, like to share um, with you. Um, and um, in this way, you can um, find out about uh, the work uh, that I've been doing lately. Um, <clears throat> here, uh, it starts with the church planting ministry uh, I'm doing in the Northeast near the summer camp uh, we have. Uh, there in the mountains, uh, in the Romanian uh, mountains, uh, the Carpathians. Uh, it is a project I did in 2012, giving out Bibles in a, in a village uh, where um, the people are very religious. Because there is a monastery from the late 1400s with original paint uh, from the 15, early 1500s. And that uh, monastery is very much visited by tourists throughout the world. And uh, so as we were traveling through that village, we were burdened that there is no evangelical believer at all. No one. And so we decided to give out Bibles in 2012. And in two days, we put up a tent. And uh, we gave over 60 Bibles, which for us was quite a, num a big number. Uh, the people uh, there in the village were impressed that they were willing to get a, a copy of the Bible for free because uh, normally they would have to pay quite a price to the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is like the Catholic Church here, and they are not uh, uh, evangelistic at all, actually. They are based on rituals and traditions. You observed in the clip that monastery with original paint with the blue predominant on the walls, it's what I'm spoke, speaking about in, this, in that village. Uh, so I was able to give out Bibles and to uh, ask first from a formula what they think about the Bible. I was so impressed, so actually surprised, and I'm pleased surprised, about the responses they gave that they didn't know what Bible is. In a, in a, in a village where is so much religion, the people do not know what Bible is. Imagine that. You know, it's so sad. Not only that, but um, in that village, the people are addicted to alcohol. And you know what they would do? They would go to the local store, and because they don't have enough money, they will uh, ask from the salesman to give them on debt alcohol. And they will be put there on the list, on the copybook of, their, of the salesman. And uh, when they would... Uh, uh, receive their pension, they will take it to the local store to give the money back. So they won't have many times money for food, for our other expenses they would have. So this is the situation in a very religious village in the northeast of Romania, where the monasteries of the Orthodox churches are very famous throughout the world. Uh, well, we started evangelizing. He's a helper, a brother that is uh, helping me to um, uh, to share the gospel there uh, in, uh, in the village. And uh, we praise God that in uh, January 2017, uh, we were able to baptize the first believer ever. 
uh, uh, in, the, in the history of that village. Uh, we praise God for this great uh, achievement we uh, were able uh, to have from, from the Lord. It was God's gift to us, and He encouraged us greatly uh, through this response, and we thank God uh, for this uh, uh, precious soul that uh, accepted Christ and uh, uh, confessed Christ as Lord and Savior in the water of baptism. Uh, for one year since she was baptized, she got respect in the village uh, from uh, the people uh, living there. And uh, she uh, is able now to speak with her friends and, uh, and relatives. Uh, well, uh, because of her, now um, we are having uh, fellowship meetings. Uh, this is in her house. Uh, and uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom... Uh, it is in December as I gave uh, shoe boxes. I have also a partnership with an organization from Scotland, uh, and they are doing similar work like uh, Samaritan's Purse. And they, uh, every December they, they would send me over a, th a thousand shoe boxes. So I would be able to give in the village, but also help a dozen of pastors in my area to, give, to go out in villages where there is so much poverty and the people probably never had a shoebox, a, a nice present uh, in their lifetime. Uh, so I praise God for uh, this. This is um, a fellowship group uh, that looks like um, there. Um, we thank God that now it's getting bigger. Uh, these two women that we have now uh, are asking her for their friends to come. And we thank God that uh, the number of participants is growing. So we, we have now two uh, believers. Uh, we found uh, through this woman another uh, believer uh, that came from uh, Italy, from abroad. Uh, she accepted Christ there. And now she uh, opened up her house to have uh, the fellowship meetings in her house. That's her house. Uh, we, uh, uh, she is dressed in white in the middle, and so she is willing to have uh, the fellowship meetings in her house. Um, also, as uh, you observed in the video clip, um, in, a, in that post-communist uh, area, uh, region of Eastern Europe, I um, observed the great need of uh, giving out apologetics, uh, biblical apologetics to secular people. Uh, and here is the picture from the conference I had in October 2015 in, uh, in a city that has uh, about 80,000 students. Uh, in, uh, in, in Yash, a big city, uh, uh, and uh, we thank God that um, we had, um, in two days of the, of the conference, we had about uh, 800 people attending the conference. So we praise God for that, and I, as I was, I was told by a group of Christian students that put, helped me to organize this uh, conference of biblical apologetics, 70%. Of the people of the of the people at, who attended this conference were from secular background, from the academical secular background. Imagine that uh, we were um, we were blessed to have this conference. Uh, certainly, we had uh, some very picky questions, but we praise God that uh, these two um, lecturers uh, that we have from Answers in Genesis uh, in the left, Dr. Andy McIntosh and Dr. Terry Mortensen, uh, they are uh, in the top of the Christian scientists uh, nowadays uh, in the Christian world. Uh, Dr. Andy is putting to silence uh, the greatest atheist, Richard Dawkins from Oxford. Um, so I'm saying, how can I not uh, support and uh, take out this Christian organization that will give such a good... Uh, um, Christian uh, teaching, uh, well based from the Bible uh, to the world. Um, these are the five titles, uh, books I published with Answers in Genesis. Noah's Ark, Human Body, uh, Astronomy, uh, Social Issues, uh, Ape Man. Um, it is from the uh, Pocket Guide series. Uh, and um, it's so good that uh, Answers in Genesis is stepping in with half of the funds for the publishing but the other half is staying on my shoulders. And so this is why I'm taking these tours of uh, deputation in the US. Uh, this is another project I'm working on. 
Uh, on the top, you see there uh, a kit, a curriculum. Uh, it is uh, to give a Christian perspective on, on world and life uh, for our schools, especially for Christian schools. Uh, when I did the conferences with B Answers in Genesis, uh, I was told by a teacher of biology from a Christian school, she said, Florentine, we have our Christian schools now in Romania because we have liberty to run Christian schools. But the handbooks we have, and uh, we are from the state. And even though the Christian schools are supporting themselves with their, uh, well, uh, just a third would come to issue from their parents and the two thirds would come from uh, Western Europe, United States, as Romania is still struggling economically. But she said, we do not have still a curriculum uh, uh, that would give a Christian perspective, a conservative Christian perspective on world and life. And so I came back and I spoke to those from Answers in Genesis, and they gave me that kit. And last year, I was able to put it, uh, to translate it into Romanian language. So it consists uh, of 13 DVDs, plus a handbook of a student and a handbook of a uh, professor. Uh, and also planning for other uh, copy, for other uh, titles, um, like Dinosaurs and Young Earth, Global Flood, Six Days, Best Evidences, that will give more, uh, more um, uh, um, information about um, our worldview um, um, and uh, so that they will have uh, some Christian literature from, um, from us. Um, this is in Moldova Republic. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm uh, doing uh, regular mission trips, especially for preaching in churches. Uh, is there is a great need for ministers to go out and preach. Uh, Moldova is uh, uh, much poorer even than Romania because it stayed for 70 years under Russia. Uh, even now uh, uh, it is uh, independent. Russia has a hold on Moldova. And because of this, their corruption and their poverty is high. Uh, I was here in a Christian camp and uh, here with a church um, uh, and um, they are uh, so delighted to have uh, ministers uh, from Romania. Um, I was here uh, in another church uh, presenting uh, uh, a seminar about uh, the Reformation, Evangelical Reformation in the early 1900s. You observed uh, in the clip I uh, showed you about how we had a spiritual awakening through the translation of the Bible into uh, Romanian modern language done by an Orthodox priest who converted to Christ like Luther while he translated the Bible. Um, here are a, a, a pastor and his, and his wife and a deacon. And uh, it's so interesting that this, uh, this brother, this deacon, he came to me at the end when I delivered the message uh, at that place, and he thanked me for the message. And then he said, Brother Florentine, do you have some literature available? And tell you what, when I'm going to Moldova, I'm taking in a large box uh, a lot of literature, what I'm publishing, and so, uh, and I was able to give him, you know. Uh, he was so happy, uh, he was glad, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he, I mean, there will be so many others like him. Uh, and I uh, was so fulfilled in that day that I was a response to his uh, desire uh, to have some Christian resources. And, you know, in Moldova Republic, Beside the Moldovan Bible Society, there is no, no kind of Christian publishing house at all. Nothing is published in Moldova. It's just what uh, is coming literature, Christian literature from uh, Romania uh, to them. Um, this is in a Christian uh, high school in Moldova Republic, uh, where I donated also some um, uh, apologetical literature. And uh, they are um, willing to... Uh, uh, host a conference with Answers in Genesis. And this year, uh, in this visit I had in February, I was able to uh, st stop at the Creation Museum and I had a, 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 a meeting with uh, Ken Ham, the president, and um, we spoke about the opportunity to go uh, in Moldova, probably in Chisinau and two other places in Romania, uh, and they are looking forward to, uh, to that. Uh, this is the project I started on uh, Christian media, um, uh, and uh, here uh, is uh, on the top uh, the Christian journalist that asked me to 
start the project uh, on the, the, these documentaries about the Bible smugglers, who now, because he had a heart attack in 2015 in December, he passed away. And now uh, most of, my, of the work is uh, done uh, by me. Uh, here is uh, another Bible smuggler speaking with the mechanic uh, of the locomotives of, uh, after so many years as they are um, uh, rememorizing what they did, what they did under communism. Uh, this is, for example, a picture uh, with a grota under uh, a house of this man that was talking to the mechanic. He uh, built, he actually, he digged, uh, he took out uh, the dirt, the, uh, the, uh, the soil that was under his uh, floor in the house, and he made grotas. And uh, in this way, he uh, made a way to introduce Bible in those grotas. He was filling those grotas and putting up to, up to 20,000 20, Bibles uh, under his uh, two, uh, under his, the house he was having there. Um, and um, here is an, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, this brother who also was a Bible smuggler, even he was a handicap. And this is me uh, studying, doing research in the archives uh, there in Bucharest. Um, And uh, last year, because we, uh, the Protestant world, celebrated 500 years since the um, uh, time when Martin Luther uh, nailed the 95 Theses in Wittenberg, Germany, uh, it was a good time for doing some uh, kind of evangelism in our city. And uh, I was able to put up a seminar for ministers. Uh, there on the top are the ministers uh, from my area. Um, and um, there at the bottom, uh, I was able uh, to have an invitation from a TV local secular uh, uh, a local secular TV station, and uh, with uh, one of the um, e uh, guest speakers I had, a PhD um, a graduate, a distinguished professor of church history, uh, we gave out uh, a one hour and twenty minutes interview in which we spoke about reformation, but we gave out the values of the gospel. So uh, I was happy, so happy uh, to give out this interview and uh, be a blessing to hundreds of uh, people in my city uh, through this uh, event. And this is at the um, History Museum uh, in my city uh, where um, we had a symposium. Uh, you observe probably even in the video clip uh, that group uh, the uh, vocal men's group uh, singing the mighty fortress is our God. Uh, we had over 100 uh, young people, uh, over 100 people attending, but you know, it's very interesting. Uh, even though I uh, um, asked uh, a letter in which I wanted to, you know, to organize that event there, in up to two hours, I was uh, called by the administrator of the history museum and said, sir, would be delighted to have you uh, in our uh, history museum to give you the conference hall, and you'll have it for free. And you know, you can't beat that. It's so nice to have it, the conference hall for free. Uh, but you know what? Because uh, we are an Orthodox country, and uh, because uh, we are evangelical believers, uh, they are quite uh, protective on that. And uh, even though I gave my pastor from good time ahead, they were not willing to promote my event. So it was my work on making an event on Facebook and giving out uh, printed invitations and uh, speaking in churches, uh, announcing in churches about my coming event. And this way I was able to gather that crowd. But the uh, people, the staff working at the History Museum, they were not willing. They kept it uh, his secret, uh, hidden, you know, because they are not interested on uh, showing up anything that is connected through Protestantism or evangelical world. We, you know, in Romania, uh, we've been impacted by the reformation of Luther because um, um, after, after Luther started reformation in Germany, he sent one of his friends into Transylvania, which is a, a section of Romania, and he started there uh, the reformation. Uh, but, you know, uh, an, uh, another guy who was a Greek soldier 
with um, some Moldovan roots uh, came and uh, got the throne of Moldova, which is another section of Moldova. It was a principality, uh, the principality of Moldova. And uh, guess what? That guy, after he uh, got the throne, uh, he started a Protestant university because before coming to get the throne, he was in Wittenberg. He was schooled in the University of Wittenberg, uh, which was uh, there uh, with the... Um, um, which was led by uh, Dr. Martin Luther. And uh, that guy started to bring, that ruler started to bring uh, young people, and uh, he was doing that from, with his pocket money, uh, investing in the lives of the young people, and those who were coming, they were introduced to Bible, and they were enlightened, and they started to uh, go out and preach, but the Orthodox priests, they found out, and they disliked that. And they made a plot, and they killed that guy. So uh, things that are kept underground, kept secret, kept hidden, the, so the people that you want, they won't hear, they won't find. Uh, this is my desire through these events to give the historical truth, uh, to tell the people about the opportunities we had in the past so that the people of Romania will appreciate more and will respect the Word of God, the Bible. Uh, it is so sad that in a very religious background, like in that village, the people do not know what Bible is, and they live uh, addicted to alcoholism. This is the situation, folks, in so many villages. Uh, Vir Voronets is an image from many other villages, the most of the majority of the villages throughout Romania, even in Moldova or Ukraine, where the situation might be worse. Uh, so we are... Uh, um, um, really looking forward to uh, continue on sharing the gospel uh, there to uh, the people of Eastern Europe. Uh, please pray for me as I'm uh, returning home and I will be involved uh, in uh, this uh, church planting ministry onward and also a mission work uh, in Moldova Republic, uh, also preaching uh, in, in the Ukraine and um, um, pray for um, more people to be exposed to the uh, preaching of God's word so that they will be uh, um, um, un so that they will be saved and they will get into a relationship uh, personal relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, I appreciate you that uh, all the time you had an open heart uh, for the mission work that goes on there uh, in Eastern Europe uh, I would appreciate your prayers, your support that you, whatever you decide uh, to, uh, to, to, to give in order for the more people uh, to hear the gospel and also uh, to continue the project that I started. Uh, um, I pray that the Lord will bless you in any uh, project that you are doing uh, uh, for God's glory here um, in Hayesville, in North Carolina and throughout the world. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Florentine, for being here with us tonight. And let's all stand and <clears throat> have our ushers to have the plates back there at the back door. And if you have something you want to give to him uh, and his ministry, and we're grateful for you going and, and being in Romania and all across the country and, and uh, spreading the gospel. Amen. And uh, we're grateful for him being here tonight. <clears throat> the ushers will have the plates at the back door. Please give and and put into that, and we want to be able to help support him and uh, the other missionaries that we have and taking the gospel across this country. And uh, we're going to ask God's blessings on that tonight. Um, <clears throat> do you have anything else tonight before we go? Announcements. By way of announcements, remember next Sunday is Easter, and so we'll be having our sunrise service at 7 o'clock. And um, we'll be having communion on that day, and then we'll have a Sunday school at 10 and regular worship at 11. There will not be evening services next Sunday. But remember, right following the morning service, we will have the Easter egg, egg, Easter egg hunt for the kids um, that's eight and under out in the back. And looking forward to that. Uh, Curtis, you'll flash up that address right quick. We was asked to pray for Robin Columns and... Uh, 
uh, Sister Robin just recently lost her husband, uh, Brother David. Uh, he's the guy that was, has been fighting cancer. And uh, so we need to pray for her. They don't have a family up here, and she's just, you know, really struggling right now. So we want to put up this address. If you feel led to send her a card or anything, we'll leave this address up for a while, and you feel free to do that and be an encouragement to her. And uh, just remember, we'll have more information coming up on the youth retreat that's coming up in May. And that's going to be Memorial Day weekend with Wesley Campbell, Joplin Emerson, um, and a few others. Always a great, great weekend. And so we'll have more details on that starting next Sunday. If you're interested in that, uh, please, please, please let us know. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your word tonight. We thank you, God, for uh, God those that are able to be missionaries and God for allowing us to be the hands and feet. Lord, we pray tonight that you'd bless the offering. I pray, God, that you'd bless our brother Florentine and his ministry, God, and all the projects and the things that he has going on, and God, to share the gospel. <clears throat> Lord, in the, the literature and the, uh, the research that he is doing there, God, I pray that you'd bless that and just open up new doors, new avenues, God, to be able to get the Bible and the Word of God uh, into those countries and into those communities. God, may people, God, hear of the love of Jesus. God, may they be saved. Lord, I pray that you put your hand of protection upon him, God. Now bless this offering in high. God, use it to the upbuilding of your kingdom. God, I pray for every need, every burden, every struggle. Lord, hands that went up all over this place earlier tonight. Lord, I pray, God, you'd be real to them. God, strengthen your people this week. God, encourage them. Lord, I pray for our pastor as he's traveling home tonight. God, I pray that you'd keep them safe and healthy. Thank you for the souls that were saved. God, during this time that they've been gone and been away. Lord, I pray, God, that you just give them rest and restoration for their soul as well. Give them safe travels home. God, we thank you, Lord, that, God, this week is Resurrection Week. God, and I'm glad that you're alive and well. God, I'm glad that we can feel you in our heart and feel you in our midst tonight. God, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to dismiss a little bit differently tonight. As you head out, you fellowship with somebody, tell them that you love them. And please give at the back door on your way out. May God bless you tonight. Please remember the service on Wednesday. And remember that Sunday is Easter. Please invite somebody to come and bring your friends and your family with you. May God bless you tonight. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Wednesday.